Hey CrossCart fans, today's an exciting day. Today is the day that we start to make a passenger uncomfortable. Today's the day we start building the VF2 CrossCart, the two seat version. I've been incredibly excited about this. I got my garage all cleaned up. It's Friday night. My plan is to build the jig tonight and the chassis tomorrow. So it should be a one weekend, one chassis build, same as the VF1. If you want to custom adjust the length, uh, the part numbers you need to extend equally are listed in the build notes. It is very well outlined how to stretch it in the build notes. Check the description for a link to the plans and you can build this right along with me. Let's get started on this thing. All right, the time has come for your first notches. So the uprights have tubes that sit in them for alignment. So we're gonna grab one of those pieces. We're gonna grab a cut wrapper. And all you do is you cut it out. Now you don't really have to stick to the lines because you're gonna wrap this around the metal. You're gonna cut the metal and it will obviously cut the paper. I leave a little tail on it, makes it easier to tape. Now all you do is just follow the directions on it. 38 and 7 eighths to the end. And then you're gonna line up this blue line with center. Now I just take it and fold it right on the red line. Line up the blue and the red with the marks I made on the tube. Wrap it around, and I usually have some tape at the ready. Just tape it right to the tube. Now from there, you're gonna take it and stick it in your notcher. Uh, it's well known that I love Rogue Fab, and this is actually what turned me on to their company. This is their Rogue Fab Versa Notcher, and it makes notching incredibly easy. So you just put that in there, you line up the cut wrapper with your blade, Make sure it's gonna cut, try to cut that black line in half. There you go. The Rogue Fab Versa Notcher makes it that easy. Look at how nice that cut is. But we're not done. Another thing I love about the Rogue Fab Versa Notcher is that you can put your tube in the other side to work on it. We're just going to cut this little tab off. Now I'm not sponsored by Rogue Fab, but I definitely do love their stuff and I highly encourage everybody wanting to fabricate or get into fabrication, their tools will get you there. There you go, one finished piece. Now, I told you this was gonna be an easier build. The front camber bars on there used to be kind of a tough cut wrapper. Well, I changed all that. Now it's just four straight lines and it's super easy to get the exact angle. The caster blocks uh, hold these in place anyway, so it didn't need to be that full wrap around gadgetry going on. Pretty slick. All right, so here is the front end explained. That angle we cut into these matches this angle. This is how they fit. 
the front end fits like that. It does not fit like that. You do not have to bevel this. Uh, I called it a caster block. They just go corner to corner, just like that. This centering piece, I have it labeled to go here, but you can use it all along here to help align the front end. Now that's as simple as marking center on this piece. So there's center. Let's put that center on there. Move these in. Now you'll see me double checking measurements all over the place. This measurement should be the same. This measurement should be the same. Corner to corner could be the same. Use all the references you can to get this aligned and straight. This is your jig, so this is where it's decided whether the whole front end is going to be straight or not. hours on a Friday night and now we have all weekend just to focus on the chassis. <laughs> Day one. All right let's get that fixed get started on the chassis. Now, pay attention to the material used. Uh, C1 and C2 don't get bends. C3, C4, and C5 are all 0 .083. I'm using 0 .095 because it's cheaper and more available. Now, C6, 7, 8, and 9 are all 120 because we're going to bend it and we're going to sleeve it. So don't just get in, taking the measurement, and cutting the tube. You might waste some precious tubing if you do that. So this is kind of in a build order rather than a cut order. So something that worked out for me on the last build I did was that I only cut and fabricated the pieces I was using that day. Uh, instead of doing all the bending and all the notching in the same day, I just did all the pieces I was using. So I just cut and I'm going to bend and notch all the pieces that are just going to go on the main jig. It makes it more fun when you're not repetitively doing 60 pieces and 100 notches it just makes for a nice day in the garage all right let's talk about bending notching marking the tube to prepare for both now what i have here is a start end diagram that'll let you know which side is the start and which side is the end of the tube so that you notch the correct end you bend them in correct order generally keep ori orientation of your part so Right here I have C3, which is the right side main floor. Now we need to mark a line that connects the two ends so that we have a solid reference point. So I just have a piece of angle iron. There we go. We have a reference line going all the way down. So now we need to find our bend locations. First bend location is 8 and 11 sixteenths. So we'll mark that. I'm going to mark it on the line. Second bend location is 50 and 5 sixteenths. Okay, 
Now, this is where our bend blocks come into action. I'll introduce you to the bender when we get over there. But, um, this is the first bend, this is the second bend. I'm going to bend these in opposite order. So we have our clamp blocks on. Now this line needs to be oriented to the outside radius. So we got to twist this. Now by the time you see this video, Rogue Fab may have come out with indexing clamp blocks. So where you can just line up that line with an index that's on the clamp block. I love Rogue Fab so much. They've done so much for garage builders. I can't say enough about them. Now once you have this in position, the forward one is good. I checked it, I verified it. The line's on the outside radius and the alignment mark is right at the clamp block. Now I run these magnetic plates or just steel plates so that I can put magnets right on the clamp blocks and get my exact readout of the angle from the machine. Now once the clamp blocks are secured, you can just flip it over and verify your marks. We are good. Verify that your line is straight up and then we go over to the bender. Now, if you are stretching the chassis, uh, your jig should have already been compensating for that. The pieces are listed in the plans, but your stretch on these pieces are gonna go after the first bend. So you're gonna make this longer. So this second bend is going to be the equal distance out to however much you wanna stretch the chassis. So bend location for the second one is 50 and 5 16 If you're stretching it three inches, that would become 53 and 5 16 All right, so this is the M600 bender. I got the self-assembly kit to save some cheddar, which I love that they do. Uh, this is made by Rogue Fab. They've recently updated their product, which makes me super happy. They're not just like, hey, we've got a great selling bender. They're still trying to make everything better. Makes for a great company, and you can really tell with the stuff they're putting out. Um, the current model is an M601 for the kind of tubing I'm bending. Uh, they make heavier duty benders that can handle thicker walls and whatnot. But I use relatively thin wall, so I can get away with the M600 or M601. Now, like I was saying, these blocks, I buy multiple blocks just to make it easier to bend on the same plane. Now, I use a 4.5 CLR die, and that is according to 3D race regulations. That means that the radius of the bend is three times the diameter of the tubing. So, that's it. Load it in the machine, I bend the second bend first, so I can just remove this block, slide it up to the first one, and we're ready to go. Just gonna hook it up to my compressor, and the trigger is right on here. I got my bend instructions. Uh, bend two, the angle is 35.5, so we wanna finish at 35.5. Spring angle's 37.7. You'll have to feel out your own spring angles. This is just advisory. Depending on what thickness wall you're using, uh, what type of tube, it, it just varies. Don't, don't absolutely stick to the spring angle, play it safe. Now, I use these magnets, I put it right on the block. Now, this is completely loose, so we have no tension on this. What you're gonna do is, I just hand crank this until this gets tight. There we go. Now when you can't move that, you know that the next time it moves, it's getting ready to bend. So, that's when I zero out my magnetic level. So we're at like 0.14 degrees. If you hit the reference button, it zeroes it out. So now whatever this bends is going to be the bend for this tubing. All right, so we're at 37.73. I'm just gonna loosen this up until I can rotate this. Now, as soon as this is free, I still have just a tiny bit of tension on it, but as soon as this is free, whatever this reads is what your exact bend is. It's so stellar. So we're at 33.89, we need 35.5, we need roughly two more degrees. So I'm gonna take it up to like 39 and test that out. 
All right, that's 39.38. Let's loosen it up. Or till the tension releases. There's that. And we are at 35.48. We were shooting for 35.5. It's so easy to do good work with this machine. I can't believe anybody else is looking for less expensive benders because this is not an expensive bender. It's super affordable. For the stuff you're gonna be building, this is the way to go. So once that's done, we just release tension all the way. Grab our magnet off, pull our front pin, knock this out of the machine, and then I'm just gonna remove this block and bend the other one. Once you get in the swing of bending this, this is so easy and so enjoyable. Now for the main roll bar, you might have to get creative for how you mark center. This is my solution. Just the longest piece of steel I have in my garage and some clamps. So for you guys still looking for the cheapest bender on the planet or trying to make your own, we just bent a 132 inch piece of metal in four places flawlessly. Flawlessly. This is completely flat. This is going to fit on our chassis with no problems at all. All right, let's tackle this hood hood slash windshield piece. Uh, before it was two pieces, one had four bends, and they went together fine, but I figured there was a better way to do it. And this has an angle in it to make it look cooler. So here's the basic layout. Now, the side pieces, I didn't realize this until I was building it, and this is why I built them before I put out the plans. The short side goes down. So it's about 12 and a half inches to the bend, and on the top side, it's about 14 and a half inches to the bend. So the short sides go towards the front. On the bend instructions, uh, this one is like seven and nine sixteenths to the start of the bend, and this one is nine and five eighths to the start of the bend. That's because the start side on this is from this end, and the start side on this one is from this end. It will give you the same bend, you can follow the same bend instructions for both, or you can just do it by the book, and they will both turn out the same. There's some things in the program you just can't, can't mess with. To get started, all you do is slip an inch and a quarter into there. Uh, I've drilled out both sides on all of these for our, our butt welds. I don't like butt welding, I like sleeving. So these are all sleeved for strength. Now I'm just going to do a test fit so you can see the idea. Now, I'd, usually I'd put one end of the sleeve in, weld it so that it doesn't slip all the way into there. But this is just to give you an idea of how it's going to go together. This is what these blocks are for. This space from the floor is the measurement in the instructions. And these will rotate up to match that angle. There we go. There's the idea. This part is going to sit flat. Once we get those sleeved all the way on, they should sit at that distance. And that's how you build the front hood. That little angle is going to make this thing look sweet.
so now it is cut wrapper time. It's time to make some notches. So the first piece I have here is C3 or the main floor right side. Now I'm gonna check my start location diagram and I'm gonna see that the long piece on the back is the end and the short tucked piece on the front is the start. So this is the end. It's gonna go towards the end and this one is the start. So it's gonna go on the start. Now these are easy. You just follow the instructions on it. And this is seven and one sixteenth to the end. Now, there is no way I'm going to try to whole saw cut this. But knowing what I know and the experience I've had, you can easily get this with a cutoff wheel, maybe clean it up with a die grinder. So you put the cut wrapper on and you just cut it out on the black line. It's that easy. So a hot tip for you, um, this one I followed the cut wrapper exactly, so I did not trim the outside and it fits a lot better. I'm not, it's not enough to remake the piece or anything, but I am going to have to get a little piece of metal and line that up. That's on the front side of the side pieces, so we can do the front. Okay, it's time to start assembly. Now I cut these pieces, they're three to four inches each. And I will line the chassis to help line up the main tubes uh, to keep them right on their rails in the jig. All right, let's talk about C57 and C58. They are these tiny cross members that go between the rear bars. Now, I made these simpler. Instead of having three bends and only two with an attachment point should make it a ton easier to do, but we have some pieces that require some extra attention. So let's look at it. I've already got the first piece cut. It's just a 90 degree cut. Now what we're going to use is we're going to use this negative one half inch distance to the second. Negative one half. That can be really easy if you don't overthink it. Find your blue line, go a half an inch in, and make a mark. Now this is just scrap tubing. Um, C57 and C58 is not in the master parts list because of how it's cut. A three inch piece will not fit in a notcher. So, just get a scrap piece of inch and a half and just line it up like that. And this is gonna be a 90 degree cut and what we're gonna do, we're just gonna cut all the way through this and make a big hole in it and that'll give you your piece. And there you have it folks. You can double check the measurement. It is an inch and a half between the rear pieces. All right, let's talk about C26, which is this bar that hangs past over that. And there's a reason it's so long. Let's take a look here. Inch and a half cut size, offset. This is the only piece on here that has offset. Um, there's another piece that has setback, but you don't need to worry about setback because that's built into these numbers. Seven and a quarter to the end. That's where your setback is. Just measure it, make the cut. But offset, quarter inch. Now what offset is, is up or down. For all the cuts, we cut straight through the center of the tube. For this one, we're gonna offset it down a quarter inch so that we leave 
a little gap on the top. Now there's two of these side by side. They're an inch and a half apart. That matches that last uh, C57 cross member we did, but it's got ears that hang off. This helps align the rear end. It helps make it strong, and it's where your vertical motor mounts come up. The spacing for that is wider than the rear end, and this was a slick way to get that done. And there you have it. You can see the offset. It's going to cut off all of the bottom and it's going to leave some of the top. Now you can double check this measurement by checking the inside gap and make sure that it is an inch and a half. All right so this is where you set your offset right now it is at zero. Now we need to go down a quarter inch so all you do loosen these bolts and that will give you freedom to move the carrier a quarter. Now you can visually see and visually double check that this is going to in fact cut it low. We've got 55, 56, 57, and 26. Now how this works is these slide on before you weld them to the main floor. These are hole cuts and everything just goes right together and sits on this back right here. Now the measurement for this is 14 and a quarter in from the tail or six and a half from the center of this tube up front. I would measure mo both to make sure it's right especially if you're using the A-arms. This is the upper attachment for the upper A-arm. So this position here is critical. This gives plenty of room in the back for your sprocket. And the forward side of this is the rear engine mount. And it is a very good position to give you maximum room behind the seat. Now, if you are using a different suspension trailing arm whatever now this becomes adjustable for your motor so if you put a big giant sprocket in the back and you're using a smaller motor you can slide this forward to accommodate your engine i.e. you don't have to weld this yet you can weld these and you can weld this and this can stay a slider for when you get to your engine all right I was getting ready to get started and I got another tip so before I even get started I'm going to level these and make sure they're straight. Uh, just because it's the jig and we squared it all up doesn't mean it's gonna come out perfect. So, I just took a scrap piece of inch and a half, set it in there, checked the level, and this is a quarter of a degree off. No biggie. Um, you can trim with a die grinder these out, and you also wanna make sure it's straight this way. Uh, just give these a tap with a hammer to get it sorted out. You don't wanna build this with these being crooked. So I checked both the front and back. All right, so here we are. We've got our jig made. The floor is already sitting in the jig. I didn't want to pull it out for show, but I have all the pieces laid out for the main chassis. Now, when you're doing this, the parts fit together really well. I already test fit most of them on there in the jig. Um, if you have some weird bends or some weird notches, I use cargo straps to uh, push and pull bends as needed. And I found with this that the tubes being longer actually make it easier to manipulate and get that, that good alignment. Uh, notches, I use an electric die grinder and it works well for getting a, a little clearance here or there on some of the notches. So I'm, I'm so stoked, I'm, I'm crazy excited. Let's start the time lapse, get this going. Well, here we are again with the rear hoops. <laughs> I tried to make it easier for you guys to take out the 
three bend process and make it two bends, which it is. It's easy to see the apex of the main roll bar and this goes right on here, right at the end. The problem though, is that there's wiggle room. There's wiggle room in the angle. You can't just put it on there, tack it in and call it a day. I, I, at least I'm not happy with it. So what I did was I cut C40, which is the upper cross member for the rear. It goes on this joint right here. Now, since this is a cross member, I strategically placed it to where it would drop in the tight. So instead of that, we're gonna use this as a reference. Now I've marked center on it. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these two in place. I've got the uh, center of that angle marked up there. And obviously this just goes on the end. And then I'm going to align the center of this bar with center line here, center line here, and center line forward to have view of all of that as I'm positioning this. And once I get it in place, I'm going to tack this in place. I'm going to get the other one, put it in, and then slide this down, making sure this stays center, and just adjusting these with a, a light hammer tap until I get it in. That's why I'm going to tack them in. It's still going to be a strong cross member, and there's two more cross members to go in here. So it's going to be super strong, and hopefully it turns out to be easier. I don't know. All right, so it turns out it is a lot easier. Um, I underbent this one by, I don't know, a quarter of a degree. It was off here by maybe a half an inch or so. And I just got a cargo strap, hooked it in there. I tacked these two in at the top and I'm using C40 to align everything. Now, now another awesome tool we have is our trusty angle finder, 64.71. 64.06. That's definitely in the ballpark. Let's see if this centers up now. Wow, that's that's really, really, really close to center. Holy smokes. I think that's it. <laughs> uh, I'm actually surprised. Sorry. When, uh, when this first happened, I was like, oh no, how the heck am I gonna get all these pieces in? But remember, Every problem has a solution. It's just up to you to find it. Well, cross car fans, here it is. Here it is, it, it's beautiful. I've been going over the measurements, uh, checking it out, making sure everything's gonna fit properly and everything is checking out incredibly well. There's plenty of room for the seats, plenty of headroom, plenty of leg room. And as you can see, this isn't much bigger than the single seater. It is literally only 10 inches longer. Now it's sitting taller, but the only reason it's sitting taller is because I have the ride height sitting taller. It's sitting about five inches higher, if not more than the single seater, so it's about five inches taller. Now, as you can see, it's, it's, still, it's still that nice, compact, cross-cart look. It was really important to me to find that balance and not make just a home-built side-by-side. -side. This is 
racy. It's uh, smaller, compact. You can take it on trails. You can take it in your backyard. There's plenty of room for two people. This came out really, really well, and I'm excited to continue building it. Now I'm going to continue working on the single seater. Uh, this is almost ready for its first drive. I'm just waiting for some brake lines uh, because I have a feeling that I'm not going to take it easy because I never take it easy when I drive these things without brakes. It's just asking for trouble. And obviously I'm going to keep working on that. Good things are coming this spring. Uh, I'm hoping to get these done before Busco Beach because that is an incredibly fun event. So stay tuned, keep watching, and see you guys next time.